Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you something that you will use throughout your math career, and it is how to define the domain of any function you are given. There's pretty much two rules you want to follow, and once you know these, you can find the domains of pretty much anything. One is that the denominator cannot equal zero. The denominator does not equal zero, because then the function doesn't exist, so that's where the domain won't exist. Okay, and then another, another thing is the square root of some x value cannot be negative so under square root under radical cannot be your negative and now we're gonna have some examples of this under radical cannot equal negative number let me just write negative in case people are fast forwarding or something negative number okay so now what we can do is we can figure out how these how these two rules are going to be so helpful so let's say we have like some function we've got like x plus 3 divided by x squared minus x minus 6 and we were asked to find the domain this is example one well we see that there's no radicals so we don't have to worry about rule number two but we do have to worry about rule number one we define when is the denominator going to equal zero and so we've got x plus 3. Now I'm going to factor out the denominator. I'm going to get x minus 3, x plus 2. I'm going to set my factors equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3. Here we've got x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 2. So the domain exists at all points except 3 and negative 2. So our domain is all real numbers not equal to 3 and negative 2 and if you wanted to write this in interval notation you could say negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 2 to 3 union 3 to infinity so what we did there is all we did is we saw well the denominator can't equal 0 and so we solved it so now second example we're gonna do one of the radical ones so number 2 we're gonna say we have the square root of x minus 9 plus 3. And we want to know the domain. Well, let's look at rule number 1. Is there a denominator that can't equal 0? There's no denominator here. We don't need to worry. All right, so now under the radical cannot equal a negative number. So that's what, we're, we're, what we are working about now. So this plus 3, we really don't need to worry about it. It's just on the end, so ignore for the domain. All we need to worry about is what's under this radical because that's going to have restrictions. So we know that, well, like we said, anything under a radical has to be greater than or equal to 0 because it can't be negative. So that's what we can do. x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. OK, well, now to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to get x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 0. So now I can just add 9 to both sides and just solve my inequality. So x is greater than or equal to 9, and that means our domain is x is greater than or equal to 9. That's it. In interval notation, we've got it can be greater than or equal to, so let me do my bracket, 9 all the way to infinity. And let's think about it. If we had 0, just as an example point, we would be left with 0 minus 9 plus 3, and that equals square root of negative 9 plus 3. So that does not work. We can't have this negative square root. We're going to get imaginary numbers. So this is the domain of this function, and we just used rule number 2. So now let's look at a pretty tough example where it kind of combines everything. Um, let's just combine these two examples. Let's say number 3 will get uh, like x squared minus 3x minus 7 over um, square root of x plus 3 minus 2. Okay, so first of all, denominator cannot equal 0. So any number that makes this equal to 0 is not going to be in our domain. So that's what I'm going to solve for, solve for first. I'm going to say square root of x plus 3 minus 2 cannot equal 0. Okay, so now let's figure out when it does equal 0. So now we're setting it equal to 0. So we're going to add 2. We're going to get square root of x plus 3 equals 2. I'm going to square both sides now. Squared. Squared. 
Okay, now I'm going to get x plus 3 equals 4. So x equals 1. And so really that means that x cannot equal 1 because when x equals 1, we get 1 plus 3 is 2. I, well, 4, but then square root is 2 minus 2, which equals 0. So x cannot equal 1. That is our first um, realization. And now let's worry about this. It says under the radical, it cannot be a negative number. Okay, so now I'm going to just look at this radical right here because I know that's going to be my next restriction. It has nothing to do with the 2. It has nothing to do with this, this numerator. It just has to do with the denominator. So x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. All right. So now again, what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides and we're going to be left with x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so that's the restriction for our um, radical and then we already have our, restriction, our restri restriction for the denominator being equal to 0. So these are our two rules. So now we can make a final domain um, statement. We can say the domain is going to be um, x is greater than or equal to three to negative three and x does not equal one. So I would probably write this in interval notation. Um, I would say, well, we're starting at, it could be equal to negative three. So we're starting all the way at negative three and we're going all the way up to one because that's a stopping point. That's a point that it cannot equal. Then we're gonna go union one all the way to infinity. So we can't equal anything less than negative three over here, and we can just not equal that one, but every other number is fine. So what we did there is all we did was use these two rules. These two rules will hold true throughout any function you are given. Just make sure the denominator cannot equal zero, and under the radical cannot be a negative number. I hope this was able to help. This is an important lesson, so I really hope you guys understand this, and let me know if you want more videos like this, and if you have any questions. Thanks for